Hello and good morning. And this morning I have something exciting for you. Well, I think it's exciting. It's our billet fuel filter housing. Now the billet fuel filter housing has been around for a few months and I thought I'd made a video for you guys, but I actually don't think I did. So I thought the perfect opportunity to show you the billet fuel filter housing is on the Notorious. So come into my gold paradise. I'm, I'm gonna really try hard not to digress on this video, but. So here we have the, the fuel filter housing. Um, and when you buy one of these from us, you have the option of buying it as a filter head alone or with the pipe kit. So what you get is, yeah, the housing. And if you opt for the pipe kit, the pipes come with all the banjos and pipe work supplied. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. But first, I wanna show you where it fits. Um, hence this beautiful example that I have created for you. So first of all, we have the arrow that points into the filter. Now this one is the inbound line from the fuel tank or from your fuel supply. So generally, if you have a, a lift pump like this one does that's at the tank, it will come from there, be pressurized along the chassis and then up and then into here. And you will get in the kit uh, a banjo supplied that you can put your own pipe onto for that. So that's one. And that uses an open banjo directly in. Now you have a little um, eighth NPT or BSPT, both fit. Uh, here so you can take a fuel pressure measurement from your lift pump so wh whatever your lift pumps delivering you can take a measurement here which is useful because it's pre-filter so if you're worried that you might have a filter blockage you can find out there right so that then goes in to the housing it then goes through the filter now the filter uh, that it uses is the standard Mercedes filter that you'll get on a um, W210 so just standard stuff, and it works very well for even good power. So it goes through there, through the filter, and then back out, and then out of this fitting here, again through a completely open banjo, down this pre-made line, because you'll get this line if you buy the kit, and then into the injector pump. Now, obviously, this is my saucy little gold uh, workpiece, but it's the same. It's the same banjo, the same fitment. Um, so you'll get that banjo and that banjo and this pipe and they're both open. Right. So fuel is going to go then into the injector pump. Now you can imagine that that is the fuel has been pushed into here and then at the back, I don't know if you can see there, I'll get my torch out. I'll rummage around in my pocket. There you go. Look, you see at the back there, there's that, this, this banjo bolt here at the back. Will it zoom into it? Yeah, there you go. So that banjo bolt there at the back is the restrictive one. And that banjo bolt basically holds, holds the pressure inside the fuel pump, right? So this one is feeding it into the pump. The pressure is being held at that point in your pump because it's really important that you have pressure in the pump. And then that next pre-made line from there back up to the housing comes to here, which uh, has an R on it for return, because it's the return from the pump. Right, now this is the clever bit that we changed with this filter housing versus the original. We put another port, well, we've put two additional ports onto the side of here. We've got one that allows the return directly back to the fuel tank, so you can see this is my feed and return from the fuel tank. I wanna see your builds as neat as this as well, by the way. Um, so the return line goes directly back to the tank and the reason I'm saying this and making a point of it the 603 filter housing which is similar to this it has like a three-way um, fitting which is much more complicated so we've added a point so then also we've added a point for the return on the original like a 603 housing here's one I prepared earlier you can see that it doesn't have any of these fittings. And those two are combined with this one all in here. They have a weird T-piece shape thing going on. Um, so we've done away with that. This here pipe is not shown here. So this pipe here would go onto the inlet and that, that fitting there 
would go directly onto the mechanical lift pump that would normally be fitted here on your injector pump. So you'll get one of these supplied. So if you're running like um, the mechanical standard lift pump, then that's what you need to fit. Now, you're gonna be asking questions, when and, wh when and why do I need a mechanical lift pump or don't I need a mechanical lift pump? So historically, going way back in time, when I first built one of these, I was under the impression that the mechanical lift pump would be able to supply big horsepower because the first second pump I ever built with any big horsepower on a 606 was an 8.5 mil superfluid pump. That only had the standard mechanical lift pump. It made over 500 horsepower on the dyno. I then later learnt, because I was a, a distributor for diesel mechan pumps, that the diesel mechan pumps could not do that they needed a higher inlet pressure because of a, a design flaw um, so lots of people were moving to electric lift pumps so it, it brings up the question what lift pump pressure do i need for my pump right so if you're using any one of my pumps uh, and you want to use an electric lift pump two bar is fine but realistically anything between 0.5 and 2 is fine you don't want to be going over two because when you start pushing over two, it can cause um, the rack to actually start to stick and become quite resistive and you get hunting and other issues. So you don't want to do that. Um, if you have one of those older diesel Meccan 8 mil pumps, subsequently, by the way, when I had this conversation with Goran and I discussed with him, you know, your eight mils aren't making power like the superfluids and all the rest of it. He took it quite seriously and he actually altered the design, changed the inlet hole height, um, which, which then sort of fixed the problem uh, and allowed them to run at a lower pressure. But the point is, um, if you do have, I think like a, an eight mil diesel Meccan LF1, two or three, you're gonna need big fuel pressure. So like three bar inlet pressure to make anything over, I think 350 horsepower is all I could squeeze with the lower inlet pressure. So you're gonna need more than that. But with any other pump, do not put that much pressure in. It's not ideal, it's not suitable. This isn't a let's bash Goran, by the way, because this is about the filter housing and he's, he did change it. And you know, if he, we all go through this development process, whatever. But if you want the pump that makes the most CC from the lowest inlet pressure, the 8.5 Superfluid, I think, hands down is the winner. This isn't about pumps, this is about filter housings. So let's go and take the three filter housing, the, these two, over to an EDC filter housing over there, and we can compare all three, and you'll get to see the differences. We've got um, the standard EDC one. I've brought this standard engine prop over for you to have a look at. Um, and the standard EDC one, as you can see, has the plastic uh, inlet parts, inlet points which I was discussing earlier. This one's just kind of been like bodged a bit with some rubber hoses just to run a mechanical pump, um, which most people will do if you're wanting to use the standard EDC housing. Now, you can see also on this EDC housing, it has this section here. This is quite the important point. Um, two parts here, one here and one here, and that is the pre-filter. Now the pre-filter is usually the cause of breakdowns non-star issues and all kinds of issues that you have with a 210 because those two points and this one in fact are all on the vacuum side of the mechanical lift pump so if you can imagine this mechanical lift pump would be on the side of your fuel pump it'd have a different style fitting because obviously it wouldn't look like that this outlet would be going to your filter housing to pressurize but the vacuum side the suction side of the pump would be drawing through this pre-filter and this so the pipe would come from your tank to this preheater and then it would go from the preheater to this and then to the um i can't remember if it actually goes through the sov or not either way it's, no, I don't think it does. I think it's just those points. Anyway, regardless, it has a few points of um, air ingress, and that is what causes the breakdown. So when you start to run it on things like veg oil and all the rest of it, when it breaks down the oil seat, the, the O-rings, and it starts to gel and, and the fuel becomes very heavy, and it won't pull through the filters. The first thing that happens is it just pulls air at these points. 
Right, so if you're running an EDC pump, you're gonna be leaving that alone. Replace all the moorings and run it on diesel and she'll be reliable and she'll last forever. Don't be messing with it. If you're running an EDC system, it's complicated enough as it is. You don't really wanna be removing the SOV and having the other issues that are related to that. So just leave that alone. If you're going mechanical, remove it because it is a pain it is a problem and it is extra complication that you don't need. If you go in mechanical, you're only going to need these three points. But we've covered that in how to pipe up your pump in 4K video that we did years ago. So let's show the differences between these housings. So um, this is the previous version from a 603 and you can see that it has the exact same style ban uh, banjo bolt fitting in the top three ports and they all do the same job in, out from filter and then return. And you can see that both the EDC one and this, they all join these three. So you can see the return that would be coming up from the pump, the return from the injectors, and this one then goes to the return to the tank. Now that's what I was trying to describe earlier, is that what we've done is eradicated this complicated fitting system and the potential for uh, issues with breaking that. So we've given each one its own uh, port so this one is the return from the fuel pump, which comes up here. This one is the return to the tank. And then this little one here is your actual return line from your injectors. So that keeps that really nice and simple. And all those fittings come in the, in the back. So if you are running a mechanical lift pump, like I said earlier in the video, this is what you will have. And that pipe, which I was describing, screws onto there and then goes straight into the port closest to us. I've wrote some little notes down just to help me remember. I've mentioned about leaving the EDC alone, not removing the SOV and not removing the other bits of the system. Um, but what I haven't mentioned, which is important, is I've, I talked a little bit about fuel pressure, drilling the banjo. So if you're running an 8.5 or 7.7 and this, that and the other, there are certain limitations. So let's say with a mechanical lift pump, if we were running a 7.7 mil injection pump, 400 horsepower is the max I would go with a mechanical lift pump, about 400 on a 7.7. With the 8.5, like I've discussed before, it does a lot more with lower inlet pressure. So I would, I would happily run 500 maybe even 550 that's not been proven but maybe maybe 550 500 has been proven so one of these little mechanical lift pumps will deliver 500 horsepower will deliver 500 horsepower out of your 8.5 mil pump now if you are going to run the Bosch 044 or similar then you are going to have to restrict its pressure because they're made for fuel injected petrol cars which run five bar fuel injection pressure whatever you're gonna to have to bring that back down and that's dead easy all you have to do is the return banjo that's here this is obviously a standard um a stock edc one it's extra long you'd pack that out if you were using that in a mechanical pump with some washers um or alternatively in our kit it'd be a shorter one like this what you have to do, and I'll take it out of the bag to make it. So what you're gonna have to do, if you're gonna run this with a, a Bosch 044 or similar, to prevent it from creating a high fuel pressure that you don't want, you're gonna have to enlarge this outlet hole in the banjo bolt to the same size as that inlet and i believe it's 2.5 but just get a drill bit slide it in there and then you're basically going to drill that then use a countersink and just make them both neat and then blow the airline through and that usually with a 2.5 mil drill bit will drop your overall fuel pressure to to around the two bar you could sneak it up to 2.5 it's not going to cause a problem but you don't want to be going up to that three bar and higher with any pump i know that obviously i just earlier described with some pumps you had to do it but that didn't mean it was good we were having to do it because it wouldn't work without it not because it was good so fuel pressure lower is better um, 
as long as you can maintain that lower pressure. So you've seen uh, things like the fuel and pressure gauges where you, you, you can screw that into the side of one of these, our fuel inlet pressure gauge. You can also screw them into the uh, fuel pump itself. It comes with a supplied banjo. And you can use that gauge as a testing method to make sure that your fuel pressure isn't dropping off. So let's say you're using the mechanical lift pump. You want to ensure with that mechanical lift pump that you aren't dropping uh, down to zero and ended up with no fuel pressure. You want him to be keeping at 0.5. And with the Bosch, you want to be keeping to between 0.5 and 2. That's the ideal. So I hope that I've covered that. There's a lot, there is a lot in, in, involved in, the, in setting up the filter housing. And this really can be one of the main causes why most people ring me up or email me and say, you know, I'm not making any power. It's, it, I, I'm, I'm getting smoke, I'm definitely getting fuel, but it's making no power. And it's, it's a common misconception, unfortunately, because you're getting smoke because maybe one cylinder's getting fed with fuel and the others aren't. Um, that fuel pressure has to maintain and the gauge is the only way to read it so if you aren't sure get the gauge um, but yeah at least you now understand the complexities involved in the billet fuel filter housing it's a nice weighty piece I bet that's twice the weight of that mm, I like that bye for now <laughs>